Hi, I'm Jeremy, or Dr. J. I'm Ronnie West, and this is Good Parents, Good Children. Parent like your kid's life depends on it. Parents who choose to use punishment as one of the tools in their parenting toolbox often are tormented by a feeling uh, that maybe they shouldn't be doing it, they're not sure it works, and also the sense that they're just not getting as much community support, like they use punishment and they're embarrassed about it, so they don't want to talk about it, this sort of thing. Well, you know, wouldn't it be great if uh, there, there, there were all this uh, research on punishment and it's very specific effectiveness or it's effectiveness uh, in your home. And, and unfortunately, what's happened is that punish, punishment research has become very difficult to conduct for, for a couple reasons. Right. There's perceived ethical issues and real ethical issues of how do you run a punishment experiment? How do you run punishment experiments if the perceived issue is if behavioral sciences have already come to the assumed conclusion that uh, punishment yeah. is unethical, if they've already come to that conclusion and it's held very strongly, then it's going to be hard to get support for any research that studies punishment because it's a foregone conclusion. So this is basically what's happened uh, in, in our universities. For those of you who haven't done uh, research at a university, if you do, you have to go through this institutional review process and people review the ethics of the study that, that you're going to conduct. And if you try to do uh, an experimental study with punishment involved, it's going to be shot down because the foregone conclusion is that you're going to be harming children. Right. All right. So, and there's another um, issue with just if you try to design uh, this kind of research that, that you run into a, a number of confounds. So, if you were going to do a proper uh, science. What, real quick, what's a confound? Oh, thanks, Ronnie. Uh, you're going to run into uh, variables that you can't control, and it makes your results uh, not reliable or, or it, makes them, it makes them look wrong. It screws everything up. So I just thought of a really weird example. But if you're trying to bake a cake, you wouldn't want to do it in a room that's filled with sawdust in the air, right? Sure. And, and you wouldn't want to do it in a room that was also 300 degrees, right? Because then the room's going to gonna cook the cake, right? Right. And, well, and also, you know, while we're using this baking example, if you bake really high in the mountains or you bake below sea level, it actually significantly changes how things work. So, so those yeah. are confounding examples in, I mean, essentially chemistry, but the same principle applies for, for, for any kind well, of behavioral Well, fair studies. enough. Okay. So let's take uh, the experiment and it works like this. I've got children and I've got punishment. Okay. And I'm going to, and, and the punishment intervention is a, a 10 second timeout. All right, so I'm going to take uh, some kids over here, and we'll call them a control group. These are just normal kids, and I don't do anything to them. Uh, they 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 go forth and do the negative behavior. They they do the um they do tantrums. No intervention. Uh, no intervention. And I have I have ten kids over here, and and they do the tantrum, and and when that happens, well, well, I time them out. Okay. Well, first of all. You could probably run an, an, an experiment like that and get a result. But since the whole thing that we're talking about is, is child development here, it's really difficult to uh, take a kid and put them into a punishment or non-punishment group because they've already been getting punished or not all the way punished by their parents. So I can't really in, – in science, it's called random assignment. I can't, I can't say, hey, hey, you know, you belong in the not punished group or you belong in the punished group. And so that decreases our confidence in that kind of experimentation. So there's like so many different confounds, so many different things that could make big differences in the research. So you've got their diet, you've got their sleep, you've got who is doing the punishment. And you could try to make it so that the researcher is the one that's doing the punishment. Sure. But then you also have, how do you enforce the punishment? Because for a child, if you just say to a oh, child, yeah. you need to go into timeout, well, the child has to, to a degree, voluntarily go into timeout. And if they refuse to do that, then you need to have the authority, the, the confidence, feel mm -hmm. okay with physically putting them in timeout, or else you're going to have to choose a different intervention. If you can't physically yeah. touch them, then that, that shifts it all around. And you've got, as you alluded to, their history. 
have they been getting punished in the past? Because if they've been a pun, if they've been punished effectively in the past, then they sort of know the script, right? Like the adult authority figure calmly tells them what the punishment's going to be. Mm -hmm. They need to go ahead and follow through with the punishment or things will get worse. So they feel bad and they're upset, but then they, there's a, there's a script, right? Well, if you create a, That's if, right. well, they're, they're a punishment, the punishment group. They're yeah. the punishment group. They're already in that, the, yeah. that side of the experiment. Right. And that's that's sort of the point, right? <laughs> Is that parents can, they're sort of running this experiment already. There's a good mm. chance that if you've been trying out punishments, you, you're not running a purely perfectly scientific experiment, but you are running an experiment and you it can give you some significant and useful information on how well it works and what works. And, and that you can be confident that punishment mm. can work because of that. Well, so and I think you hit some of the some of the right words when you were saying uh, authority. There, there's also this idea of relationship, right? I, I can bring children into the lab and and conduct a, a research experiment where the researcher applies a punishment. And matter of fact, the design we we talked about before, if you could get it past institutional review, which you probably couldn't, you could run that experiment and you could have a result. Okay, it's, it's messed with because there's the history of punishment, but it's also messed with because of who is the punisher. We think it's a really important, uh, if you will, experimental variable, uh, that, that parent-child relationship, all right? It's a different thing if I try to punish rando kid. First of all, I have no authority to do that. I probably shouldn't be, and, and if I punish my own child for whom I have responsibility, uh, a matter of fact, for whom, for whom I have duty <laughs> right. uh, to punish. All right. Now, it, you, you talked about this personal history, this history in the child, and we talked about the difficulty with running these, these experiments today, but there's actually decades of research on punishment. Uh, right. Well, we've got, if you look back in in the past, so around what decade would you say behaviorism started coming on the scene in psychology? Yeah. So 20s, 30s, 40s? I mean, sure. Behaviorism existed in like the aughts or, or the tens okay. with, with like- I knew it was early 20th century. Yeah, but, but mainly 20s, just like you said. Okay. That's so where, that's where we have BF Scanner on the scene. Right. So then if you look at some of that research, they did a lot of significant research. Mm -hmm. And one example that can help us- understand how punishment can work. And, and remember, this is, all, as always, punishment's a tool we can use, and it's going to be better when it's accompanied with relationship, as you were talking about before, mm -hmm. and then other strategies, not just punishment. We've got other training. But along with other things, punishment can be a useful way to train. And some of the early behavioral scientists yeah. would use experiments with animals. Right. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, would would use uh, experiments with animals, and and I know uh, you were you were talking to me because because we went to school together. Um, because uh, we went to school together about we even did like some some virtual animal experiments together. Right, the the program with like the virtual mouse, and you could give it. I think could you you could electrically shock the mouse in the virtual program, yeah. and you could feed it pellets if it would press down the bar the button for food, and you learned which strategies of reinforcement were the most effective, mm -hmm. which, I mean, what it comes down to is if you, if you have the, the rodent get a food pellet every single time it presses the button, then if you turn the button off, it wouldn't take that many presses for the rat to go, well, I guess it's broke, and they'd stop. They wouldn't want to press the button anymore to get the pellet. Yeah. So you can, you can feed the rat, which is, which is reinforcing, or you can shock the rat, which is punishing. There's, whoa, what was I doing before, before the shock happened? I'm probably going to do less of that. Right. Well, and, 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 and D.F. Skinner, of course, in the 20s, he wasn't doing this virtually. He was doing it with real rats, which, which is which, why we know it, how it works. And this is how the, you know, the um, study of behaviorism showed up, and it is how how we know these things work. Now, after the animal experiments, there were some uh, kind of single subject study designs, which just means people did a, a, a real experiment, but just with like one person and and a lot of rigor and a lot of control on, on the situation. And and it's kind of funny because it's the same thing we do in behavior therapy, like like with children. So you can you can take uh, one child in one situation with their their real parents. Uh, so back when I was when I was a child therapist, you'd have this very frequently. You, you'd go into a home, uh, and, and and the child's tantruming, which I mean is like 
throwing stuff around the room, like knocking over plants, like like doing like real abuse. Tantrum level all the way to 11. <laughs> Tantrum level with the dial uh, to, to 11. And so if you apply uh, a new uh, intervention, which is, hey, every time uh, this happens, I'm, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have the parent do this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hug you close so you can't do this thing uh, that you want to do. And then we, we do that for a while and we see if the behavior goes down. But then we kind of stop with the intervention. You can watch it climb back up. And then if we apply the intervention again, you can watch it actually go back down. Uh, and so, so you've just proven that the intervention is having a meaningful effect on that child. Right. And, and you're proving that the intervention is what's making the difference. It wasn't something else you tried. It wasn't the relation. It wasn't a, like a relational change. It's it's that you you gave it enough time to not work, to work, to not work and work again. You say, aha, I, I found what it's going to be. We know what's, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it's not it's not even just in these naturalistic or, or behavior therapy settings. I mean, this continues to happen in, in our natural settings as adults. Right. So... Like we're, we're talking, you know, we were talking about examples in psychology and in yeah. research, but if you think about just in your life, the kinds of sort of negative consequences, punishments that come your way, one obvious example would be something like a speeding ticket. I know for me personally, me personally, I know that it has an impact on me now, now you know, the, the impacts speeding the speeding ticket has on me. One, I'll watch for the police more, but then uh -huh. two, I, it doesn't mean that I'm going to stay perfectly within the speed limit, but it does mean it does put a bound on how fast I go. Yeah. Right. And I don't get speeding tickets anymore, but <laughs> when I was a younger driver, I got yeah. them fairly regularly. And what would happen is I would get the speeding ticket and then I would be like, shoot, I've got to really make sure I don't get another one for six, for six months. So my average speed was uh -huh. definitely slower in my attempt to make sure I avoided that punishment for a while. And that's not the only kinds of punishments. I mean, if you're at a job and your level of performance is just is not as good at the kind of job where you have variable numbers of hours. So you're talking about like a mm -hmm. kid's first job, they're working at McDonald's, they're working at the grocery store, the movie theater, whatever it is. Okay. Then if they're just not quite as fast, they're not showing up on time as often, they call in sick more, their hours go down, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if the boss, if it's a good boss, they'll make that an overt lesson. They'll say, listen, you're not as dependable as I need you to be. You're not doing what you need to do. Once you're doing that and you show me, you get your hours back, but I'm cutting you in half. You're going from 20 to 10. So show me what you got, right? And mm -hmm. if they are motivated, then that can make a real major difference in their behavior. Of course, that means the boss has to make it overt so that the lesson of the punishment is clear with the behavior. Oh, sure. Now, th now these are some of these other things about how do you make your punishment more effective? <laughs> and, and you actually do need to make sure that uh, that the person, um, the employee in this situation, understands the relationship between uh, the intervention and what they did that was unacceptable and, and, and even the emotional situation that it happens in, which is which is the same with our children. Now, as we as, as we do those videos together, I think we have to keep coming back to, and what about the people who say that you shouldn't punish at all or punishment doesn't work? And some of it, uh, I, I think we have to affirm, comes down to this kind of 1960s prohibition on spanking or, or just, just it kind of fell out of favor. And, and you quit acknowledging that something like, okay, every, every time you do a tantrum, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold you close, uh, can, can be a punishment or um, – or if you've got a teenager, every time you sneak out, you're going to get a firm talking to. Like, like, these, like these things are Those punishing. are still punishments. Right. right. Well, and I really like your example of the kid that's taking the punishment. They're taking, excuse me, they're taking the tantrum all the way to 11, right, mm -hmm. on the dial. And the punishment is holding them firmly so they don't get to do the destructive thing they want to do. That is a punishment. Yeah. I mean, any definition that a person makes that tries to make it so that's not punishment, in my opinion, is a completely faulty definition. Mm -hmm. You're forcing something on the child the child did not choose and not allowing them to do their preferred activity, mm -hmm. which is destructive and painful for those around them. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's just such a perfect example. And I mean, one of the things I like about that particular punishment is that it there's actually sort of a loving the good thing about the yeah. punishment, there's several good things. One, it's it, it's effective. That's 
you really need that in a punishment. <laughs> Two, it's clearly loving, right? It's it's uh-huh. holding them, but it's also a hug. It's two things at once. There's there is one negative to that punishment, and that is that it is high cost to the parent. So not that, only is the right. child not engaging in their preferred activity, but how much time, how often do you want to stop whatever it is that you're doing mm-hmm. and have to go and forcefully hold down a child that is not doing what they need to be doing? I mean, you were cooking, yeah. you were doing the bills, you were on the phone with a friend. Well, that all ended. Friend. Well, that now all ended. You're now this. you're doing this. And, and another, the, another negative to that punishment. And again, this is no, this is a great punishment for its purpose. Mm-hmm. But the other, another negative of that punishment is at some point, depending on the kid, this is over when they're 10 or 12 or 14. And now they're yeah. 60, 80, 100, 150 pounds. Mm-hmm. There's an expiration date on that punishment, which is why, and this isn't the purpose of this video, but some of these things, you got to get this stuff done when the kid weighs, they're, they're not yeah. in your weight class, right? <laughs> you want to do it while you're the heavyweight and they're the featherweight and not wait until it switches. <laughs> well, there's in 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 this, in in this punishment example, right? The parent gets punished too. Yeah. And and so you, so the parent is having to choose how do I want to get punished, right? Do do but the parent but the, but the, but the parent gets that choice. They get the choice. And so yeah. the, so the parent says, "Do I want to have a heavy time investment now, uh, because that's what it's going to take to to get this behavior down, or do I want to, you know?" Do I want to suffer the property cost? Do I want to suffer the maybe physical harm that that my kid may levy against me if they're a teenager? Or or you know, am I am, am I gonna live it out? And maybe they just get some legal ramifications at that time. Like the parent can choose that. If they have their eyes open and they're thinking about right, they're really thinking about this because this comes down to what you might call the investment principle right? Uh-huh. Like there's some things you're going to pay for. Okay. So do you want to pay big later or small now? Mm-hmm. So, and do you want to pay on purpose in the way that you choose, or do you want to pay on accident in the way that somebody else chooses later? So some of these, you invest the time early and if it's done well, then oftentimes it pays dividends later and you save a lot of time for future you. You know, and that's that's one of the benefits we can get from this. So, you know, some of the more modern parenting strategies, uh, I've thought that they were based on like rescuing parents who who failed to lay some of that groundwork. So it's like, oh no, my kids seven or eight, and they're wild. So. I need to have a positive relationship with them now, or they need to yeah. notice, right. They need to notice that I'm being reflective or I'm noticing what they're doing. It's, and it's while we value those things greatly, it's like, if you were doing those things all the time and you were doing the bounded interventions as well, you're probably going to have a, a, a better output. And so some of this is about the philosophy of are we going to allow intentional punishment in our homes and less about, well, what's it going to do? Because in fact, you can run these experiments yourself. Right. Right. So, so you can, you can, I can't control in the lab what kind of relationship you have with your kid, but you can control that. Right. So, so you can lay down the, the empathetic time and investment with your kid to have that positive relationship with them. And is there a behavior you want to decrease, pick a loving, non-abusive, minimally physical intervention, see if it's effective. Uh, if it is, you'll know if it works or not. And you won't, you won't have to wait for the great spanking experiment, or you won't have to wait for the next psychologist to tell you, uh, you know, trust your feelings. Right, <laughs> right. You can run these experiments at in your home and see which interventions work. And some of the things you can do to try, because okay, so this is really important. If you're going to do this, there's lots of advice you can get. There's lots of things you can do. Mm -hmm. Some really simple principles that you can consider that may make your success more likely. So you want to already have a caring relationship with your child, Mm -hmm. which hopefully you already do. So you're spending time with them. You're spending positive time with them. You enjoy spending time together. You've got this foundational caring. That's covered. That's good, Mm -hmm. right? You want to be consistent. So 
you want to have a rule set that, that does you're not bound to this like you're chained down to the rules you've created you can change things a bit as you need to but overall the word that should describe how you set up your boundaries and how you shut up set up your rules with your child and in the parent child relationship it shouldn't be words like chaotic impulsive <laughs> unplanned your relationship and how you set up boundaries and rules the words that describe it should be consistent planned, somewhat flexible and adaptable, but still is predictable and structured. So in general, kids won't be surprised when punishment comes their way. They'll be kind of like, oh, I was doing the thing that ends up leading to punishment isn't going to be more their reaction. But this, I think, is maybe the, I don't know if this is the most key, but this is really, really vital, is you've got, you've got being caring relationship, mm -hmm. consistency, but confidence. You need to tell yourself I can make this work. Punishment is effective. I can use punishment in a, in an effective way. And if I have the caring relationship and I am consistent, then this mm -hmm. is going to work. Being confident is more likely to increase, it increases the likelihood of success. So uh, you're going to implement uh, a new punishment in your home. What's probably going to happen? Well, you're probably going to get an initial behavioral improvement. And then You've upset the balance. You, you've tipped the equilibrium. And so especially if, if your child's not familiar with, with, with this sort of, um, what did you say, script? Say script. Yeah. yeah. If your child's not right. familiar child's with not this, familiar sort of, this sort of, of script, script, their, their behavior is going to fight back. back. Uh, right? I, the, 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 the child's been allowed uh, to, to get away with something um, for so long, and that behavior is going to fight back. And when that happens, good. This is a psychological uh, phenomenon known as extinction burst. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is what happens when you start to punish a behavior. It'll go down a little bit, stay down a little bit, then it'll go up for real. And when that happens, remind yourself, ah, oh, this is the extinction burst. It's about to go extinct. Because at that point, it, it'll, it'll go down and stay down. You need to have that consistency through it. That's right. Yeah. It, it's going to – okay. Be because what, what the child's checking, and this can be conscious or unconscious, and we're loving about our child's intentions, but what the child is checking is, is this true all the time? All right, I'm getting punished for tantrums at home. I, I didn't think I was gonna, but I'm getting punished for, for tantrums in my place of worship. But now we're at Walmart, and I think the rules might be different here. Now, right, they're trying to figure out what are the boundaries of their existence, and I mean – there's different ways of conceptualizing this, and I don't know if there's an easy way. There's not an easy way to run scientific or even somewhat scientific uh, experiments on how to think about this. Mm -hmm. But I think you don't want to be thinking that your child is consciously being manipulative when that's likely not what's happening. Yeah. But I think subconsciously or instinctually, one of the things they're doing is they're trying to find out how honest of a person are you. You say this is the mm. rule. Well, is it? Is this the rule? You say yeah. this is the rule everywhere. But is it, is it though? Is it the rule everywhere? So is it the rule if you have to, if, if you have to punish me in front of people? Can I hold these people over here hostage or you hostage to whether or not you're willing to punish me in front of them or not? Yeah. And, and Ronnie, do, that's, that's, am I in charge of you when we're in public? Right. Am I the leader, right, mm -hmm. I the leader in public? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I hold you hostage? Well, do I, guess, I get to set the pace? Yeah. And, so and so the, the extinction, extinction burst, burst, you can think about it as they're checking to see how consistent you are. They're checking, they're mm -hmm. checking your resolve, your grit in difficult situations, not like a conscious manipulation. They don't know that that's what they're doing, but it works out that way. So be confident, hold on to your resolve. And, and that yeah. is something you can do. Now, some of the other things you can expect as you know, you're, you're trying to, to run through this punishment script with the, the consistency and caring and confidence you can, you can expect a better, a better relationship. For one, mm. you're going mm -hmm. to enjoy those behavioral improvements and it's going to be less frustrating having to, to deal with these problematic behaviors and there's some pride in seeing your child's maturity increasing and they're more functioning. And mm -hmm. over time, one of the things you may notice is they're more likable to everybody. You're training them to be more likable. They're not just more, you don't just like them more. Their siblings enjoy being around them more. Their, their potential friends like being around them and adults who could potentially mentor them over time like being around them more. And 
What may seem shocking some of the time, even if a child is harshly punished, they often end up being happier pretty quickly afterwards. Mm -hmm. They seem to appreciate. So a moment ago, I said that they're, they're checking to see how honest you are. Mm -hmm. Well, if you say that they're going to be punished, they need to know if they can trust you. But also when they're bounded, they're secure. When the boundaries are right, it means that they're free within the boundaries. Well, that's good news. Mm -hmm. And if the boundaries are right, then they're kept safe from anything outside the boundaries that aren't that aren't safe. Like that, there can be this feeling of security with mm -hmm. training and punishment and discipline that is bounded properly and is clear. Right? These are the clear boundaries. I'm I'm in this area, and so the kids can be happier, happier with you, happier with the relationship, and appreciate the boundaries. And then. I'm sure over time we'll go over videos about the changes in life over time and how boundary, you know, hopefully you train kids so that the boundaries can expand and they'll gain more freedom and responsibilities. But regardless, you need to get the boundaries right based mm -hmm. on like their level of functioning and what they're able to accomplish. Well, there's this, there's this thing that's happening because, because as you're going along, your child is naturally becoming more virtuous, but so are you. So the, the if you're doing this all right, if you're if you're doing this all right, um, the the child's be, um, negative behavior is decreasing. They're they're losing vice, so they're objectively becoming more virtuous. They're seeing honesty modeled in you as you're becoming more honest. They're seeing responsibility modeled in you as they're becoming more on, as you're becoming more honest. Their rationale is improving. Their understanding of cause and effect. Uh, and, and in fact, their wisdom in decision making uh, is, is, is happening. So if you've got a kid that's been that's been punished well and you put them in, in society, they're actually able to create boundaries of virtue in, in, in those around them. But for more reasons that you should punish, check into our next video. Hi, I'm Jeremy, or Dr. J. And I'm Ronnie West. And this is Good Parents, Good Children. You're already scarring your children emotionally. Why not turn it into profit?